Hello. Welcome again. It is another video of my data science and machine learning tutorial. In this presentation, we will see how to build a neural network using TensorFlow to predict a classified output. Previously, we have seen two ways to convert the categorical variables to numerical values. Because, when working with building machine learning models, we must have numerical data. As an example dataset, we have used the breast cancer dataset, where we converted the categorical diagnosis column into numerical values. The breast cancer dataset is classified because each row of the dataset classifies a single outcome, malignant or benign. Here in this video, we will use the same dataset to build a sequential model using CARES to predict breast cancer classification that a form of a tumor is a malignant or benign. Remember that, malignant tumor are cancerous and can spread to other tissues and organs, and benign is a form of tumor that cells are not cancerous and won't spread to other organs. For quick information, TensorFlow is an end-to-end -end open source platform for machine learning. It has a comprehensive flexible ecosystem of tools, libraries, and community resources. On the other hand, CARES is a deep learning API bundled with TensorFlow. And the sequential group is a linear stack of layers in the CARES API. Let's jump right into the code. I have already made this code for taking advantage of time. But you can feel free to pause and ponder over any portion of the video. First, we will load all the required libraries. We have imported here the sequential model from the CARES to build our prediction model. To create an artificial neural network, we have imported the dense layer. And to plot the network diagram we have imported the plot model. Then we will upload the breast cancer data. From the previous video, we already know, our dataset consists of 569 rows and 33 columns. It also has an empty column called unname32. To clean the dataset, we must get rid of that column. So, our final clean dataset has 569 rows and 32 columns. Now, we will convert the categorical diagnosis column to numeric values. In our case, this is the most valuable data values in the dataset. Because data in this column, we will be using as targeted output to build our model. Defining input variables and targeted output. Here, we have taken column 2, radius mean, to the last column, fractal dimension worst, total 30 columns, or 30 features, as input variables, x. And the column 1, the diagnosis column, is our targeted output, y. Now, we will split the data for training the model and then testing the model with a separate set of data. Here we are using scikit-learn's train test split method to randomly select and split the input data and targeted output. We selected here 30% of the data for testing purposes, and the rest of the data will be used for training our model. Now we will create the sequential model. It is an artificial neural network, ANN. It is a linear stack of layers in the CARES API. So to build this model, we have to pass a list of layers to the constructor. Here we have named our constructor as classification model. As we can see here, we have passed four layers in our model using the dense layer. It is a deeply connected neural network. The dense layer implements output operation using the activation function. Here the unit parameter is a positive integer that denotes the output size of a layer. It's the most important parameter we can set for a layer. Our neural network consists of four layers. The first layer input dimension is 30, output dimension 16. Second layer input dimension 16, output dimension 8. For the third layer, the input dimension is 8, the output dimension is 6. Finally, the fourth layer's input dimension, or the output layer's input is 6, the output dimension is 1. We only need to define the input dimension for the first layer. Now let's compile our ANN model using an RMS prop optimizer. It is a correction to adequate optimizer. An optimization algorithm decides how to use the difference between the results it got and the values it knows to be true to adjust the weights on the nodes so that the network steps towards a solution. An optimizer is one of the two arguments required for compiling a CARES model. As another argument, we have used the loss function binary cross entropy to compile the model. Let's quickly check the model status here. The model diagram shows here that our model consists of four dense layers. The first dense layer takes input 30, and can give output 16. The second dense layer takes input 16, gives output 8. The third dense layer takes input 8, and gives the output 6. And the fourth dense layer the output layer takes 6 inputs, and gives one final output.
Now we will train our model with X-Train and Y-Train instances. They are containing 70% instances include input data and targeted output of our dataset. In the fit method, batch size is an integer number that indicates the number of samples per gradient update. Epic is generally defined as one pass over the entire dataset. It is used to separate training into distinct phases, which is useful for logging and periodic evaluation. For mode code documentation, please see the code repository. I have put the link in the video description. Wow, pretty impressive. As we can see here, our model is successfully trained, and it is capable to predict the targeted output with more than 90% accuracy. Let's check the X-Test dataset. Data in this dataset our model hasn't seen yet. So with the X-Test dataset, we will manually check what our model can predict with this input, and we will verify its prediction accuracy with the white test output. Wow, very impressive. On a total of 171 of test data, our model has correctly predicted 165. This means it predicted correct output on the X test dataset with more than 96% accuracy, which awesome. Now let's test how our ANN model performs on an individual data point. In our X test dataset, we have a total of 171 data points. So we can access these data points individually using their indices. Let's randomly select the 149th index. So using this individual value as input, the model predicted the output is zero. Now let's check the data set if the prediction is correct. Awesome. As we can see here, our model has predicted the output accurately. Now, let's check the model performance on another index value. As we can see here for this case also, our model has predicted the output accurately. 